Okay, hello everybody. It's a pleasure uh, to participate with all the distinguished guests in this great forum. And uh, I'm here to give uh, a presentation about the construction as a key driver for sustainable economic development in Africa. My name is Ahmed Abdelaziz Youssef, and I'm the Director of Operations in Egypt for Dar al Handasa Sharan Partners. Who we are, Dar al Handasa? Uh, Dar al-Handasa is the founder of Dar Group with 19, over 19,000 professionals. We have five principal design offices in Beirut, Lebanon, in Cairo, Egypt, London, in UK, Pune in India, and Amman in Jordan. We are covering 46 permanent local branch offices, 12 of which is in Africa. We have served 950 clients in 60 countries with more than 4,000 successfully completed projects. We are ranked number seven among the international design firms according to the engineering news record rankings. We are number two in the Middle East and number five in Africa. We are considered number three if we are uh, ranked as uh, one of the pure design firms. Uh, with our 14 or more than 14 affiliate companies, we cover all disciplines in the design and engineering and technical services, starting from uh, conceptual design, feasibilities, the studies, everything uh, uh, from concept until uh, final complete delivery. I'm going through the Africa's economic outlook, especially after the current pandemic. Uh, Africa has always witnessed steady uh, gross uh, uh, domestic uh, product growth rate and uh, uh, with a 3.6 to 3.2% uh, annually. However, due to the current pandemic, uh, it's, it's, it's expected to drop to minus 1.7. However, luckily, uh, during 2021, we will reach 4.6% of uh, GDP gross rate. This is very optimistic. The economic sectors that are expected to be impacted by the current uh, COVID-19 impacts, uh, there are some that will be heavily impacted like oil and gas uh, refinery industries, like tourism, like maritime transportation, manufacturing, recreational, architecture, mining, and small and medium enterprises. However, uh, slightly uh, the construction, real estate, and transportation, transportation will be having medium impacts where health, where, uh, while healthcare, infrastructure, and ICT will witness low impacts. Some see that the current pandemic is uh, an opportunity for uh, reforming the uh, world and the industries. Uh, the World Economic Forum sees it as an opportunity for a great reset, as a, uh, an opportunity for industrial revolution, number four, which is the digitalization, reinforcing regional development, uplifting global cooperation, valuing sustainable development, redesigning socio-economic sectors, new world economy, and restoring the environment. As identified by McKinsey, there is an opportunity to identify the new norms, also called the new normal, and imagine the unthinkable. Within the global order, there is an opportunity for realigning the balance of power, globalization of going local, and new concept of labor mobility. For societies, there will be remapping in urban landscapes, focus on social justice and equality. For individuals, there will focus on healthcare, shift in cultural daily routines, uh, focus on digital consumer markets. While in business, we will have appetite for digital transportation, digital-based business models, remove jobs, and digital market, markets. In emerging construction industry trends, 
there is are there are changes in the market requirements customer needs there will be persistence in cost pressures and tight budgets increased project complexity focus on end user needs and cost of ownership increased attention to hse sustainability and digital uh, interaction while in, as construction inputs there will be change in the supply chain of materials and products so, uh, and scarcity of skilled labor the emerging trends in the industrialization there will be focus on production technologies and offsite production digitalization data driven decision making reliance on technology in design construction and operation as for material technology there will be focus on lightweight uh, eco-friendly sustainable materials and there would be new uh, breed of competitors this will lead us to uh, future programs customer centric projects investment in technologies market consolidation sustainable construction digital supply chain reliance on artificial artificial intelligence and machines and of course focus on specialization also as defined by mckinsey the imagining development in africa post epidemic or post pandemic the society will accelerate digital transformation focus on vulnerable rural communities and focus on resilient healthcare systems in business we will have market consolidation consolidation and innovation we have self reliance on manufacturing formalization of african economies which is the most, the most important as for government there will be focus on and a need and necessity to regional and pan african cooperation public and private partnership proactive role to sustain economy how to build business in africa post pandemic how to develop market strategies with the set clear aspiration for gross tackle significant market sectors and infrastructure for example setting achievement goals innovative business models create products and service targeting africa's needs harness technology and innovation go lean to drive costs down unleash african talent grow talent from the current population building and developing skills and then long term resilience in engage and build relationship with governments and develop partnerships we covered the expected changes and trends in post pandemic and the relation with the construction industry now we are going together to take a look about on um, the needs and opportunities in africa concerning infrastructure and construction industry now in africa we have almost 1.3 billion persons in population 504 million considered as a labor force in 2020 these figures are going to increase dramatically and reach by 2050 as 2 billion persons in africa and around 800 million consequently as a, a available labor force we can imagine together according to a pida infrastructure outlook how uh, many house facilities housing facilities at schools and universities healthcare facilities that will be needed to cover the existing needs for the current 1.3 and the expected uh, increase in population of the 2 billion in 2050 this is just a glimpse on the opportunity developed additionally the uh, gdp per capita will increase from 4700 dollars per capita in 2020 it will uh, expected to reach by 2040 uh, 1104 uh, 11490 which is almost 2.5x the current uh, gdp per capita it will increase the purchasing power of the individuals of the uh, population in africa however currently the infrastructure investments are only 4% of the, uh, the gdp why we need almost 150 million us billion us dollar 
yearly in order to cover the requirements of Africa's infrastructure. Meanwhile, the current population uh, has only, 30% has only access to sewage services. Only 54% have uh, access to paved roads, 63% access to piped water, 65% access to electricity, whereas 93% have access to mobile phone services. This will give us a glimpse how much uh, expenditure should be an investment should be directed in, uh, uh, towards uh, infrastructure to cover the gaps in the current needs. Also, thousands of miles of roads need to be enhanced and developed during the coming uh, uh, period until 2040 in order to enhance the Pan-African Pan trade and uh, cooperation. Almost 300 million passengers need to be added to the capacity of the current airports by 2040. Additionally, also by 2040, there will be a need uh, to reach 1,600 terawatt per hour from the current 400. So there is a great uh, deal of, uh, of electricity and power need to be added to the current this, of course, will be covered by biomass energy, geothermal energies, hydro energy, solar energy, and wind energy that the available resources in the African nation. Additionally, there will be also almost 300, 300 cubic kilometers per year uh, of uh, water that need to be added as needs and, uh, and uh, to meet the demand on water whether for agriculture, domestic, industrial needs. We have gone through all the enormous opportunities of business and needs and infrastructure in Africa, and uh, that we need to cooperate together in order to capture these opportunities. However, there should be a business way forward. As explained in the uh, previous two sections of the presentation, we have a great deal of Africa's unmet development needs. We have currently international appetite with know-how to come here to Africa, invest and uh, harness this golden mine. Uh, and we have currently available a foreign direct investments and of course, we have Africa's huge labor force. Collectively, these are the factors that will, of course, enhance the economic development of Africa. However, as defined by, by uh, McKinsey in a report, only less than 30% of the projects achieve financial closure. And 80% of the projects fail on the feasibility and business plan stage. Why is that? Identified by the causes of the infrastructure paradox, the availability of everything, but uh, uh, very little projects take place because of the limited deal of uh, or selection of, of low impact projects, lack of long term master plan that can bridge political cycles, weak feasibility study and business plans in the beginning, delays in obtaining licenses, approvals, and permits. Inability to agree on risk allocations, inability to secure off-take agreements and guarantees, and poor program delivery as a result of insufficient capabilities in planning. However, there are solutions to uh, overcome this paradox in the, in the, of the infrastructure projects. Government and development institutions can take part by improving the flow of private sector financing and commercially viable infrastructure sectors, improving the commercial viability of projects, reallocating government financing and investments into uh, to less profitable projects, not to compete with these successful uh, examples, strengthening collaboration with national or multinational multilateral uh, financial institutions. And for the private sector, 
developers and investors, they can invest more in capital upfront to ensure that projects are feasible and correctly prepared from the earliest development phases. Focus more on examining the risk profiles of their potential clients, identifying financial partners that can support them with risk mitigation. That's why we need to focus on bank bankability and guarantees we need the help of the governments to uh, um, to prepare an enabling environments by preparing uh, a proper regulatory framework, a proper legislative framework, and enhance the funding sources. And by collaboration between the stakeholders of the construction industries, governments or the end users, design consultants, consultancy firms and construction uh, companies. Collaboration will lead that international consultants should provide technical services at early be beginning to ensure feasibility and proper project delivery and guarantees. International construction key players have to bring their know-how to the, to the continent. They have to commit to employ local staff and provide them with proper training to meet the requirements of the large uh, amount of projects. And the inter international construction companies, they should work hard with the international financial institutes to provide EPC plus finance projects with even the facility of operation and transfer of uh, knowledge and uh, assets at the end of the concession. If we collaborate together, we can all captured this great opportunity, these great opportunities and this gold mine in Africa. Thank you so much. This is the end of my uh, presentation and I will be happy to entertain any questions.